And so when we finally get into the project, we have a lot of missing scope, missing requirements that we never had time to discuss because we focused at the beginning on just a few that were very important. Um, not separating the what from the how. Does that happen in your meetings? Right? You're there to talk about what they want, and then they're going into details on how they want to implement it. Or your technical folks that are within you, within, in the room with you are asking how questions. Developers don't understand the problem domain. This is what I call kind of, uh, you know, I'm a blind developer. Just tell me what to code and I'll code it. It could be extremely wrong and I would not have a clue because I don't know who the user is. I've never met them. I'm actually not even familiar with the system very much and I've never shadowed anybody who's ever used it. So I have really no clue about the system. So I'll just uh, code blindly and then during testing you'll have to tell me why the button was not supposed to be at the very bottom left corner. Um, no clear definition of done. I cannot, I mean, we can't, we can just have a whole session on the definition of done. We should do that, Sarah, right? A definition of done. How do you know you're done? How does the developer know they're done? How does the tester? And more importantly, how does your business person know that you're done with a requirement? How do you know you're done? Is it just when we've got a really big stack? What's that definition? And then, obviously, the biggest problem with everything that we're doing is you guys are trying to document something that's abstract in somebody's mind, and you're trying to make it concrete. So this is the biggest challenge, right? It's something that's a concept, it's an idea, it's something that they might not even be clear on. And so a lot of us get frustrated when they say they just don't know what they want. That's true, they really don't know what they want. That is the whole benefit to having a, a skilled business analyst. Guess what, that is absolutely your role, is to walk them through. It's like if I was trying to build a house and the builder says, She's not giving me the details of exactly the finishing and the, la and the lighting and, um, and the color that she wants because she doesn't even know. I don't know. You're right. If I'm building a custom home, I need you as a builder to help guide me through the process of what should I choose? What are my options? How do I think? What, what else could I be missing? What should I consider? Right? So, yeah, they don't, they don't have very clear pictures. Software is really interesting. Software is not something you can just visualize at the beginning and know exactly what it should look like at the end. You guys agree with that at all? Software is pretty challenging and biggest thing. All right, this is a very, very important um, picture that I want to show you. I use this in my class. I'm going to actually go through these in steps a bit. What I, what I want to emphasize for you is that there are multiple level two requirements. And when we are saying requirements as a general world, word, it's very confusing because I don't know what you're talking about, what level. There's something above there. You don't even have to use the same names I'm using, but something that could be a theme. Example. If I'm building a house for you, the first floor would be a theme. That's how big, right, is the first floor. Medium level are features underneath that theme. So I can say, oh, in the first floor, I'd like two bedrooms, one bathroom, a living room, and a kitchen. Make sense? Do you think these are still small enough that they can be implemented, or do you think we need to break them down a little bit more? Yep. Small. Small requirements are still business requirements but they are implementation ready. You've broken them down to a level where developers can start working on them. If you don't do that and you leave them up here, which is what I call the can of worms, when the developers start working on them, first of all, the estimate that they gave you was wrong, the effort that they estimated was off, because you were dealing with something too big, um, and when they finally get into it, they won't get it done anytime soon because they're dealing with epics. An epic is something that's too big. You have to have the skills to learn how to break down from medium to small, because trust me, that's the area that I've seen a lot of, of companies not actually get to this level. They'll have medium requirements, and they'll jump into the deep dive. The deep dive is the details, where, okay, tell me exactly how the screen should look, tell me what the business rules should be, what should be the test cases, exactly how do you want this specific area to work, and there's the disconnect. Sometimes I see people going from visioning, which is high level requirements, into a deep dive. So we're talking about the first floor, and we're immediately saying, what, what exactly do you want the, the, the color of the paint to be in the bedroom? Do you guys see what I'm saying? Color of the paint in the bedroom is a detail, deep dive question that relates to the bedroom and that relates to an aspect of the bedroom. Do you see what I'm saying? Another example I want to give you so you understand this is if I'm going through an online job website, monster.com, let's say that's the one we're building together, there's usually a job seeker area there's an employer area and there's a recruiter kind of area. The job seeker area would be a theme, right? What would you, what, what big features would you imagine under job seeker? Ability to browse and search jobs. 
resume, resume management. And so if I called feature two here resume management, underneath it would be uploading a resume, deleting a resume, viewing a resume, right? Jobs management would be viewing a job, searching for a job, applying a job. Do you see where I'm going with this, okay? So you break it down into small enough little chunks that can actually be developed. Only when you have this list down to a small level should you attempt to do a deep dive. The sooner you do a deep dive in a project, before you have a complete list, the, le the more likely your list is not complete and you will have scope creep in the middle of your project. Okay? Does that make sense? So, um, and then the, the phases that you go through really is visioning, brainstorming, breakdown, and deep dive. Okay, so what do you do to prepare for um, this? Obviously, having the right skills is really important. Ah, number two, which is what we're going to jump into for today, identifying the right stakeholders, right? Making sure that we have somebody from a business perspective that can lead the project, that can say, look, I can make a final decision on this, and then having the right subject matter experts available. I do believe that as a BA, you need to have some understanding of the problem domain, but let's talk about how much. This is a big debate that I always have with, with some of the BAs. Um, should I be an expert in the, in the area? Because I need to answer all the questions, right? So what should I, should I be an expert, or what kind of knowledge should I have as a business analyst? And then the most important thing is I want you to think about requirements gathering as a process that needs to be designed. Not just let me just schedule the meetings that I normally did. You really need to think about it. Who should be included? What are the type of meetings I should have? How do I get through these steps? What type of meetings? Because if I don't design it, people will come to a visioning session and they'll do a deep dive on you. Right? If you don't tell them we're getting to that meeting, this is not the meeting right now. We are now visioning and brainstorming. In our next meeting, we will be breaking down requirements, and then in our last meeting, we will be you know, actually doing a deep dive. Um, and then obviously executing. So business lead. How many people here are doing Agile? I'm just curious in their project. Okay, so a few companies. You would call that the product owner, obviously, right? Um, a business lead is one person on a project, and I know you guys might have really big projects that have multiple teams. I'm talking about at least for every team. There's got to be one person from the business side that can make the final decision. Have you guys been on teams where they have to go out and talk to seven, eight different people and resolve conflicts between business people themselves? Who wants what? You know, dealing with the fighting and which one's higher priority than the other. Do you really think that's the job of a team that's here to execute? A lot of people will tell you that if somebody requested this project to get done, whoever that person, that sponsor, right, should either himself or herself, or they should assign somebody to be one business lead for this project, be a final decision maker. A lot of companies that I go into that do a lot of product development, I was just at a via communication, they call that the product manager. Every product would have a product manager, and that product manager would have final say on the project. Their job is to go and coordinate multiple inputs from stakeholders, figure out priorities, get all the inputs, and then just let the team know what to get done as opposed to having to deal with that portion, right? So a business lead is extremely important. Um, not having a business lead will feel like the team's always got conflicting priorities, they're shifting, they don't know who to please, they'll please one area and the other area will feel like they're not satisfied because you've got too many bosses, basically. Um, they're knowledgeable, empowered, engaged. Um, the biggest reason we have waste on projects, and you guys will have to tell me if this is right or wrong, missing requirements. Do you agree? Missing requirements. Misunderstood requirements or features. The ones that we couldn't understand. A team working on non-valuable requirements. So we've got the list. What they really, really want to see tomorrow or the next week is really the number 17 on our list, right? We're not, we're not working on what's really valuable. Business changing their mind on what they want on the future. We believe that if you can do the right stakeholder analysis, if you can identify the right business lead from the beginning, if you can get the right subject matter experts engaged, remember I have to finish the statement, it's not just about getting them or finding them. I mean, you can find them all day and put their names on a, on a list somewhere. It's about getting them to be engaged, answer questions, give you feedback. Guess how much of this you've eliminated? 